Hello everyone. Thank you for stopping by my YouTube channel, Get Crafty with Sally. My name is Sally Poole. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Albany, Oregon. Welcome. Today I have a really fun, sweet card I want to show you how to make. Um, I think pretty much everything I've used is retired, so Hopefully, these are things that most of you will have. Uh, let's see. I am... Let me grab my stamps for this. For the little deer and the tree... Trees. I used the snow front stamp set. And... For the ornament cutout, I use the, it's from Embellished Ornaments, the Delicate Ornaments Thinlets, and I used just the outline die that goes to this ornament. I'll show you how I did that in just a minute. Um, let's first do, let me show you what you're going to need to make this, I guess would be a good place to start. Here are the measurements and supplies that you'll need. As always, I will have a PDF with all of this information, everything I've used, um, stamps, dies, etc., there will be a link below this video in the description box that will open that PDF. So you can either get a screenshot of this or you can just um, enjoy watching the video and open the PDF later. So I think the first thing we'll do is let's do our ink blending and stamping and for that we're going to use this little two and three quarter by four inch piece of basic white. I am going to grab a piece of scrap paper and in the supplies this piece that says one and three quarters by four for a blending base. It's not really a part of the card. It is um, what we're going to use to keep a white area on this and then blend ink up at the top for that pretty evening sky look. So what I did with this is just took my paper snips and just randomly cut some wavy, a, a wavy line across the top of it that might be like a, you know, a hillside out in the woods. I'm going to grab the old crummy one that I have. Um... If you're cutting this ornament out and you pretty much center it in this piece of basic white cardstock, um, the measurements that I gave for this piece will uh, make it pretty much so you'll end up with the same sort of a look. You can adjust it if you want. You can scoot it down. You can move it up if you want a little bit more in the in the image area but you will have more white space so I am just going to I'm actually going to put a little piece of removable tape there and I'm going to get it unsticky and then put my piece of basic white down and then for the stickies on here I just have um, post-it note and I've taken one off cut most of the paper off that's not sticky cut that in half and I'm just using those two little ends 
So I'm going to line that up ish, and it doesn't have to be perfect with the bottom of this piece of paper. I'm grab my chair, make sure we're in the camera, and I'm going to use, I have Fresh Freesia, Balmy Blue, and Smoky Slate, and I've only used Smoky Slate for the little stamped image underneath the deer. Um, my ink pads are kind of dry and need to be re-inked, but I didn't want to re-ink them and make everything really wet. So I'm just going to take my blending brush. Oh, might be a good time to mention, if you do want to put the little moon in there, I have just um, used a little circle die. It's about an inch. It's actually a little over an inch from the Layering Circles Framelits, which is an old set, and cut this circle out. You can see I've already used it multiple times. And you will want to, let me see if I can find, you will want to kind of lay this piece over the top where the cutout is and figure out where you want your moon to be. I'm not going to put a moon on this one, so I'm not going to use that, but you would just put that on there, leave it on there while you're doing your blending, and then remove it when you're finished and you will have your moon. I did add just a tiny little bit of Daffodil Delight to the moon when I was done. So I'm just going to go along this bottom edge where I've cut this little landscape wave. Got a snoring dog already. And I am going to add my fresh freesia and I'm using circular motion and I'm not pressing really hard. It does look kind of, I don't even know the right word, blotchy when you first do this, um, but it will, the ink will smooth out after a little time goes by. So depending on how light or dark you want this color, you can keep adding ink or stop whenever you're happy with it. And I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to close up my fresh freesia. I'm going to grab my balmy blue. And a blending brush. And then, and you always want to start off the edge of the paper and come onto it so you don't end up with a big blob of ink. And you do want to run this balmy blue ink down into the fresh freesia. You can mix them a little where they meet. You'll get a little different color of purple, which is kind of a nice little haze at the top of the fresh freesia. So I think that looks good. Let's close up this ink pad. Now we can remove this little paper piece and get to stamping our little images. And the nice thing about the stamps from this set is they're all uh, solid, so there's nothing to color in, which is great when you're putting it up against a background that you've blended. So let's take our 
two little deer, if I can find them. Here they are. And I'm I'm going to use my Versifying Claire Nocturne ink because it is black black. And I'm going to stamp my little deer. Let's see if I can get it on here without sticking my head under the camera. I'm going to stamp them towards the center. And then I'm going to take the um, two smallest trees in the set. I'm going to take the smallest one and I'm going to stamp. I've got ink right there. I'm going to stamp pretty close to behind the left deer and then I'm going to do a second generation and stamp that again. And you get a little lighter um, variation of that image. Now I'm going to take the next biggest tree and we'll stamp it over here on the right. And I'm actually going to do another second generation. I'm going to scoot it down a little bit and I'm going to do a third over here to the right. Those won't really show up a whole lot with that cutout. Then I'm going to take this little, there's kind of a little landscapey hill shadow stamp. And I am going to use Smoky Slate. And I'm just going to give the deer a little bit of ground to stand on. Excuse my head if it's in the way. There. So that makes a lot more sense when you're looking at it. So now, let's set that aside for a second. And let's grab our card base, which is five and a half by eight and a half. Scored at four and a quarter. I'm going to fold it in half, burnish it, make sure it's got a really good crease. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my four inch by five and a quarter piece of fresh freesia. And I actually, on this card, um, I used a piece. A little bit smaller because I wanted just a fine little purple edge. It is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. Um, this one's going to show a little bit more colorful edge around the embossed front piece. So let's take our little stamped piece. Hopefully it's dry now. And I'm going to put a little bit of green glue on the back. And I'm going to have to stand up so I can get it straight. And I'm going to try to set this right in the center of this fresh freesia piece. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm just gonna put my tape on the back of the fresh freesia piece. And I will adhere that to my card base, making sure that the card opens on the right-hand side. So let's get this centered on here. And the next thing I'm going to do 
this um, embossed layer is actually popped up on dimensionals. Um, fortunately, I have already put uh, dimensionals on the back of it. Unfortunately, I laid my <laughs> piece of pink um, paper on top of it. So, we'll see if it sticks. Can you see the mess that I made? So, I was trying to be clever and I took all of the covers off the dimensionals already. Maybe I won't do that again. So let's center this on our fresh freesia piece. And we'll give that a press. And then in the die set, and I'm not sure what I did with it now. Here it is. There's this cute little ornament top piece. So I've already cut one of those out in Fresh Freesia. And I am going to grab a, let's see, I just need about half of a mini dimensional. And I'm going to put it at the bottom. And then I'm going to put just a little bit of Tombow glue. I want to get the glue started and make sure it's coming out. There we go. Just going to put a little bit of glue on this loop that's on the top of it. Okay. Put the cover back on the glue. Take that cover off my dimensional. And then we can set that little piece on top of the ornament and give it a press. So if you want to know how to cut the piece with the ornament and you're going to do multiples, I did mention this in my last video. I have centered this where I want it and I've taped it down. So all you have to do is take the piece that you're going to cut, line these up, and run it through your Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. And I will do that really quick. And I'll probably end up moving my grid paper and everything again, but that's okay. So I've got my base plate, which is plate one. I have a plate two, a plate three cutting plate, the paper that I'm going to cut, and the paper with the die tape to it. I'm going to line those two up, put on my second plate three, and run that through. So then you can just punch out this ornament. I don't know if you want to use that for something else, maybe. But then here you've got a, another die cut and it's in the same spot. So the next thing that we're going to do is I actually have some, now I'm not going to remember what it's called, oh gosh, Champagne Mist in this little sprayer. I've got 70% alcohol and champ just four or five drops of Champagne Mist. Put the champagne mist drops in first if you're filling this up from empty 
And then I usually fill it up about three quarters of the way full and then shake it. And you want to give it a good shake before you use it every time because the champagne mist does settle in the bottom. I will put a link or a couple links to the champagne mist down in the description box below the video. Um, Stampin' Up! used to sell it, but they don't anymore. So what I am going to do is I'm just going to spritz this on my card. Um, I'm going to try to set this box under the camera. I just have a box with a paper towel in the bottom um, for just for this purpose. And I'm just going to spritz this card. Give it a couple spritzes. And this is kind of like um, Wink of Stella. But it's nice because you can spritz it all over the entire card instead of painting it on. So it just gives it a really nice look and I think it's great for Christmas stuff. So you can omit that step if you want or you can you can do that. So the, the last thing we're going to do is put a, I shouldn't say the last because I'm going to put an insert in my card. Um, I'm going to put a little bow up here. I did grab a bunch of the different Stampin' Up! ribbons and made bows out of them. This one is from, let's see, Snowflake Splendor Ribbon. It is really stiff and I don't really care for it. Uh, this one, I love this ribbon. It is um, glittered organdy ribbon. And then I also have this, uh, let's see, silver metallic edge ribbon. It's white with silver. That one's really pretty too. I actually thought all of those were too big. And on the original card that I showed you, I did use my favorite white crinkled seam binding ribbon. Um, but I almost think it's a little bit too wide too. So what I am using today and I don't know where it went, is just um, a little piece of ribbon off of this Celebrate It roll that has white, red, and green. And these are an eighth of an inch wide. I am going to use it's driving me crazy that I can't find the piece that I already cut. I am going to cut a piece about, mm, oh, I see it. I think it's about eight and, a, eight and a half inches long. And I've got my little bow tire here because I stink at tying bows. So we'll just quickly tie a little bow, give that a tug, pull our little tails down a little bit. And then I am going to just take a glue dot I'm going to roll it up a little bit if I can on here. Stick it on the back of my bow. And put it on the top of that little ornament hanger. Goodness sakes, Willow. So now I'm going to take my good scissors 
and I'll cut the ends of these. Hopefully I can get them kind of even. And then the last thing we're going to do is put the four by five and a quarter insert piece in our card. And I'm just going to use tape for that. I think it just makes the card a little more sturdy for standing up assuming that's what the people that you send it to are going to do with it. And it also gives a nice layer to write your message on. So there is the card. I did not put a sentiment on this one. Um, if you do want to put a sentiment on it, I would suggest that you scoot the ornament up a little bit so that the point of it is not so close to the bottom. So here is the one with the moon, one without the moon. Of course, they have different ribbons for the bows. And then I also have this one that I did in, I did Fresh Freesia balmy blue, and then um, starry sky. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but I flicked a little bit of this Dr. P.H. Martin's ink. You do have to mix it with water and you just need a little tiny bit. I flicked it on there with a fan brush. Um, so it looks like snow there. And then, of course, I used the Starry Sky cardstock. And then this one, I used the larger ornament die from the same set. It goes around this bigger one. So I wanted to try it with a little bit bigger space for this image in here and see how I liked it. And for this one, I used the little caribou from Nature Sings. I did use the same trees. I left the moon white. I didn't put any yellow on it. I'll compare these here for you. So depending on what kind of a look you like. Um, and I did not color the caribou. Only because I used the VersaFine Claire ink. And um, most times when I do that and try to color it, it smears or bleeds. So if I had done Memento Tuxedo Black ink, I probably would have colored these maybe, I don't know, crumb cake or something light. But I think they're fine just the way they are. I think it's pretty cool. And this one, I had enough room to add the sentiment from the same set and Heaven and Nature Sing. That is from Nature Sings. So I thought that one was kind of fun too. Let me know what you think about these cards. I am not sure which is my favorite. I think I like the little deer best. Um, and maybe the one with the moon. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Anyway, if you're getting anything out of my videos, um, I hope you'll hit the like button, give me the thumbs up, share my video with your friends and your family. And if you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. It helps my channel grow. I appreciate you stopping by today. I hope you'll give this card a try. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And I will see you next time. Bye.